Okay, guys, we're back out here again. Yes, it's late again. It's 8 o'clock again. But I'm giving the old Chef Tush power hour. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say something about the cart. This cart's growing on me. We still haven't sanded it. But this cart's growing on me. I didn't realize how functional this thing was going to be for, like, overhauling the engine parts. Forget about welding. Like, cylinder heads, blocks and everything else it is lacking one thing besides being cleaned off the top you know stripped down with like a flapper wheel it needs something to lock it and hold it here now I could have got locking casters but they still swivel unless you buy really nice ones and then everything locks then this cart would be $300 um, I'm just gonna run four simple what they would use as leveling bolts but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them I'm gonna have them with a like a little piece of uh, rod on the top so and they're gonna be fine thread and I'm just gonna be able to go like this just so when I put it to where I'm working the front two I can just do it till they touch the ground and the thing will stop moving all around so not necessarily to level it well you could level it that way level it meaning not rocking I mean you could level level it but level it so it doesn't rock which it does in some spots of the garage floor because this thing does not flex but it won't move you know what i mean it won't move on you so you could work you know what i mean then you could do the back ones also but just to do basic stuff like right here just bring them down and uh that's it and all you have to do is raise them up a quarter of an inch and it'll be sitting on them and this thing weighs a couple hundred pounds and ain't moving so with that said but i like it i definitely like it here's that ugly grommet you saw yesterday with the cable we're going to put it in this way it was in this way we are definitely going to open up the hole. It is very thin, the rubber. They do that on purpose. But if I do it like this, and I come out, and I make a curve, it's going to be sitting on rubber. I think it would be much more attractive than having it this way, and coming out and sitting on rubber. Okay, this was the ground I had in there. I mean, you can see how much easier this thing's going to be to work with, and it's not going to pop out on me. So, with that, I'm going to open up that hole probably full size right now. Okay, uh, you could do that with a unibit, you could do it with a razor blade, exacto knife would really go awesome. By the time I cram all this shit through there, you'll never know I did it. But the key is, I have to be able to get that um, bulb from the capillary tube and the water temperature gauge through there. So, I think everything's going to come through the hole first, then we're going to fish this thing on. That's what we're going to do, but I just wanted to clean it real quick and shorten up that cable. Um, I don't plan on using this cable. I cut the end off. I plan on using that end and mimicking that, which is easily done. You can buy those in aluminum at the, at the depot and crush them yourself. Because I want to be able to come off this latch and go somewhere, like in the wheel well, where I could just reach up and pop it, pop the latch. Not back up in the car. That's bullshit. I don't need any of that. Somewhere short. Maybe somewhere in the bumper zone. I'm not trying to hide it so nobody breaks in. Uh, but it is that type of latch. And I'm probably going to leave the latch exactly the way it is. With its natural blackness to it. Um, so with that. Uh, let's get working. I think the first thing I'm going to fish through is. I'm going to figure out where I want to run it under the dash. I got one or two old tack wires. I just want to cut out real quick and make sure I'm not going to short out. And then I'm going to run that capillary tube to, through and then probably lay it over the radiator support like the rest of this wiring. Because that's really all I need to do right now. Because I'm going to be fishing stuff over this wire like the grommet and things like that. Uh, so there's no reason to run it under the intake and, you know, take this gauge off and stuff like that. So, okay guys. Okay guys. Oh. That's the package tray. <laughs> I've been wanting that thing out for 14 fucking years. <laughs> Excuse the language. Oh, I've always hated it. It's just useless. You can just cram some crap here and barely get your hands in there. And cram some stuff in here and barely get your hands in there. Something Junior made when he was young, obviously. Yeah. We'll probably clean it and put it back in. But regardless, here it is. Here's some trim pieces. Don't want to lose any of this. 
So, um, yeah, you got to do that to wire the car. There's no way. Now everything is open. Now, if you took off the bracketry that held that up, it would just look like the bottom of a Hornet dash. So, in so many words, he's got to take off a couple of tabs, and this tab's hanging. Obviously, the kick panels aren't on this thing. We got this peeled back because we got to put that piece back around the steering column. This is the wiring we're ripping out right here, as well as this. I just realized that the antenna wire is useless. We don't have an antenna on the car. That's not hooked that thing anymore. I just never pulled it out. So we're not going to yank on it because I'm sure it's taped otherwise. I know how they hacked it in. We'll neaten all that up too. It doesn't look too bad from here, but we'll see. We'll see what we're going to do here. Here's the whatever satellite, whatever the hell this shit was. Gone. Put the stupid ass power adapter. Gone. We already got a clump gone. Let's keep going. That's how I plan on doing it. You see it going back? I plan on bringing them all along that one. And coming all there. And be coming as one trunk. I might get the corrugated stuff and go over it. I might. We'll see. But here it is coming through to here. So even if I come around the front of the motor, I'm good. So we're going to put a gradual curve in it, come under the run as the intake, pop up and come here, or, or since I have the distributor wire to run, we might come around the back, lay it right on the edge of the valve cover, and come under here to here, and then run the distributor wire with it, and join them as one. You know, every couple inches you just go around one and a half turns with a piece of tape, and it looks tasteful and they'll come in together. That would probably be the better bet under this circumstance. Uh, I think this will screw right into the adapter that's there already. I don't think I gotta change the lower one. So the lower one is brass, the upper one is crap, whatever it is. It looks like that size, but we'll see. Like everything aftermarket, I guarantee you this doesn't fit into that and the whole assembly doesn't fit into the intake. Mm -hmm. So with that, now that I've run the big thing through, all I have to do is, um, because we got no, I mean, we got some heavy wiring to do, but once I start running all the wires on, I won't be able to put the grommet on unless I slice it. I don't want to slice it, so I think I'm just going to board the grommet out, pop it in, and we'll continue working from there. So it's already neatening up. Here's the pile that we pulled out already from the car. So we're doing good. I have a little more light in there. I just clamped the thing. That thing stays nice and cool. So, and uh, we'll see. I want to definitely make up a little panel there to block off that area. So that stuff's going to run right alongside the little switch panel. So it'll all be like congested in one area. When you look in the car, it'll be out of your face, but it'll still be there like a race car. How's that sound? So, okay, guys. Okay, guys, there's the grommet. You can see the interior fits mint. It actually fits into the second hole because it's two layers of metal. Perfect. When we're done fishing everything through, we'll just go in there with a little butyl like I did there and ooze it in there to keep any from air from coming in. Um, so that's it. Now the rest is wiring. Okay, we'll fish the wiring in and we'll fish some of the wiring out and we'll get this mess done. It should go pretty quick now. So we got the brunt of the shit actually done. Um, we got plenty of uh, circuits left on that uh, original fuse box. There's battery ones, there's ignition ones, and there's a couple of dead ones in there that aren't used for anything. Um, I think it'll be adequate for what we're doing. Uh, you gotta remember the gauges are mechanical. So we're powering up the two lights that make the gauges glow, or three lights that make the gauges glow, and uh, attack is just a voltmeter, so that's really nothing. And then anything additional with those switches as we go along will have its own power. So, and then we got, like I said, the what do we got here? We got the coil wire coming in, we got the line lock coming in, which goes to the shifter, and we got the uh, MSD heavy wires coming in. We got this coming out, which I'm glad that's long enough. Um, probably the next thing I'll stick through that hole is the copper line. 
and I'll just run it the same way. And if we have to lengthen it, we lengthen it. That we're going to bring around. And if it has to be lengthened, I'm going to find an area where I can couple it nice and work with it. It's still out of sight, but nice. So if I got to do up a bottom part and then an upper part and join them, I will. Um, that'll be another thing that'll come down here. So we're probably going to use this valve cover just like I did on my wagon. And we'll come down here with the uh, coolant temperature capillary tube. We'll come down here with the MSD wiring. And we'll come down here with the uh, oil line. Uh, you gotta remember the oil line doesn't really get hot, it only gets the temperature of whatever's around it. You see, oil only moves as much in the line. It's not like it flows up the gauge and flows back, so it's not like it's gonna melt any wise. So, uh, just a quick note that four gauge wire I ran from the engine to the chassis ground is as thick as a, uh, we were working on a, oh, I was working on a, Lincoln shit. I forgot what it was called. The thing that looks like uh, an Escalade. Well, not an Escalade, an Avalanche, you know, with the chop in the back. I was helping the guy out, and that's what they had for battery cables. So, okay, guys. Uh, with that said, I think my power hour was over. Like I said, once again, it didn't seem like I did much, but like I said, but with good to go now. Everything's good to go in here and uh, let's get going so we'll do what we could do on the wire on this side we'll roll the car over probably gonna take the MSD box put it to the kickboard up high so when you stand there your foot isn't exactly on it uh, and wire it up nice you know bring the wires up and uh, you know we got to get the kick panels back in before the package tray that's gonna be the easy way and uh, that's it and we still got to fine tune these gauges just a little bit. I think they're off. We'll sit there and measure them and make sure it's good. And we got to pull the wheel. So, okay, guys. Let's turn this light off before I don't have an interior. And uh, let's call it good till tomorrow, guys. Oh, uh, Friday. Tomorrow night is Wednesday. I got something to do with Junior. Then Thursday night is a work late night, then I gotta go somewhere, and then we're back out here Friday.